Okay, it's five after. I think we can get started. So this call is being recorded and will be published. If anyone wants to add anything to the agenda to chat about, um, please do so in the meeting notes. Oops. Um, link. And there we go. Yeah, Dan, uh, you want to go ahead since you have a limited time? Sure. So this is Dan Kahn from CNCF. Um, I want, I'm glad to see more attendance on this call. And I wanted to give the good news that we've decided to create a telecom user group that is um, explicitly modeled on the CNCF end user community. But um, the difference is that uh, our group um, is going to uh, not just be for telcos, but also for their vendors. And that's just based on uh, telcos have never been included as part of the end user community, which has um, been uh, a, a rule for, um, sorry, uh, telcos have never been included in the end user community because it's a rule about whether you include cloud native, whether you offer cloud native technologies to your customers or not. Um, and so this is a essentially a new separate group that um, is both the telcos and their vendors together. And um, it's not a group that I'm expecting to produce code. Um, any code that they uh, want would be um, done in the upstream projects, but we definitely would like to be in a position to talk about um, requirements and gap analysis, and then also potentially profiles and best practices. And so I want to give the heads up that I've had a chance to meet with a number of uh, telcos and their vendors at Open Network Summit in San Jose last week and saw just a huge level of interest and adoption in all of these technologies. And so we'd love to create a formal way for uh, folks to coordinate and cooperate on it. So anyway, um, that work is meant to overlap pretty directly with the CNF testbed um, to the degree that people are trying new things like uh, network service mesh for configuring VPP or um, using Istio for policy or other kinds of stuff. We would love to have that not just be a white paper, but actually have it be demoed in the, in the testbed if, if people find that useful. And so our uh, plan then is to um, essentially transform this meeting into a telecom user group meeting and have the test bed be one of the topics. Any idea, Dan, if we'd keep the same time for when that uh, changes over? Time and days. about this group. Um, the last piece of it is that I've asked Cheryl Hung, who uh, couldn't be here this morning, unfortunately, but who um, leads our end user community to share this group as well. It, it's possible after three or six months that she might step aside and have a, a member chair it, but um, I'm definitely gonna be involved at first and then um, but she'll be the actual chair. Uh, and I'll stop there, thank you. Dan, um, I, I don't know if anyone else lost it, but there was a chunk of audio for about 20 seconds that right at the end, you yeah, just disappeared. I, I had the same experience. So you mentioned you're gonna move over to, a, to this to a telco uh, version and then, it, uh, and then it cut out. I, I apologize for that, folks. I mean, um, Vancouver and having uh, cell phone difficulties. But um, I did you hear me mention Cheryl Hong is going to be the chair? Yes. That was kind of the ending. So we missed the in between. You're going to convert, and then Cheryl, Cheryl would be the oh, chair. Okay. J just to, just that we're going to merge this uh, test bed group into the telecom uh, user group. That both of those um, are are designed to occur at once. And I think that was the key thought. Sounds good. Does it look like for now we'll keep the same day and time or is there any 
thoughts on what it would be <clears throat> for the telco user group. Same time for Okay. Does anyone else have, I guess, any comments or questions uh, since Dan's going to be dropping pretty soon? As far as the user group goes, the new user group or anything else on the initiative? Sounds very interesting to me. This might have been mentioned in the very beginning. Uh, is is there a, a, a specific goal in, in mind? Is it or is it just to increase adoption of CNCF and telcos? Uh, it's really that. It, yeah, uh, helping telcos and their vendors adopt CNCF technologies is the goal. Okay, cool. Great. So um, there's been a lot of collaboration with different groups um, already from the CNF testbed initiative. Um, one of those would be Network Service Mesh. So I just wanted to mention that it was accepted as a sandbox project uh, last week. So that's great. And looking at having some testing and showing the use of uh, network service mesh with the different test configure test use cases and configurations that the test bed's been using pretty soon. Moving towards that, and a lot of other groups, including um, working directly with some vendors. Uh, Intel has various initiatives along. Um, the same lines and so working with them to show various projects like uh, Multis um, will be looking at that and as well as the CPU manager project so tying in with what's needed on the <coughs> for performance network functions and quite a few other projects there's a lot of feedback at ONS from different um, vendors and projects that are actively working on this. So it's good to see the collaboration increase. Um, there's been requests also for working on white papers from the uh, Linux Foundation networking side. Um, I don't know if someone on the call, like Fred, maybe you have some more details if you wanna talk about any of those things or network service mesh specifically I know it'd be most of these things are would be of interest to anyone on the call no I, I think that there's a lot of a lot of different initiatives we can definitely talk about um, and um, I think part of our part of our goal is going to be work working out how many of these things integrate with each other to become greater than it's uh, greater than the whole uh, I, I'm, I'm really I'm really excited Awesome. At ONS, uh, we did, there was a lot of different talks, of course. Um, one of, on the CNF test bit specifically, we had a talk where it was a mix of uh, the intro for the test bed and then went through a tutorial Q&A. And that went, um, I think, really well. We've been working hard to ensure that everything is repeatable from scratch. So for those folks that don't know on the call, um, which I think may not be anyone. Everyone here may be familiar with it, but the um, from the ground up, from zero to everything running at this point, we're able to deploy OpenSec and and run the VNS on that side, and then run the same uh, setup on Kubernetes. So the next pieces are going to be really showing off um, stuff like orchestration and everything, which is where NSM is coming in. So I think we'll start seeing more 
complex and interesting um, use cases. So one of the main areas that we want is to get feedback on what use cases are most interesting um, for telcos and feedback from vendors on what they're trying to implement. Uh, Tom um, Herbert, who's on the call from Red Hat, he's looking to um, helping with CentOS support so that a lot of the telcos would be using RHEL and CentOS. So getting that into the test bed is something that we're working towards. And with that, um, we'll have the capability to, of using Ubuntu or CentOS on um, Packet. And one of the things right now that that gives on Packet is more access to their um, the, the machines that they've built out for this type of uh, network configuration. So these are the Intel network card-based machines. They're publicly released. Right now, they are actually all on CentOS side because they targeted some uh, telcos that were wanting these. This configuration is based on feedback from the work with CNF Testbed. Um, Michael was a part of that. Um, Peter and Machek from the CSET project. So all of our feedback has actually led to the configuration. Uh, it's the N2 extra large. And they've really been good about listening to that. And they're wanting more feedback. So um, if if you're on the if you're not on the packet Slack, I'd definitely get on that. But they're also on the CNF channel um, on the Cloud Native Slack. And if we have ideas on what would be good from a cloud computing or cloud provider side, they want to try to um, create those configurations that would be useful for this industry. So. Um, we could definitely have some more talks around that as well. Um, so I think most everything is right now on the development side for the CNF testbed repo is, is targeting KubeCon and adding, um, looking to add Ideally, network service mesh support, um, working on different types of configuration for the, the cloud native network functions that are privileged and unprivileged and dealing with stuff like that. We have SRV topics. We've been talking with different folks um, and getting more pull requests from, from different people is the main deal there. But I think that's it. Um, does anyone have any questions or topics that they want to see? I think um, something that would be of interest to the telcos would be in the, I don't know if the test bed is the right spot for this, but uh, we had been, we had just, done some initial work towards network service mesh and, uh, and a neutron based uh, integration where you can call, use, use a Kubernetes based system to call uh, OpenStack and then be able to make a call from OpenStack into Kubernetes in order to wire services together. Um, I, I would definitely appreciate uh, any work in that space if that's low interest. Cool. And any other topics? Um, so Taylor, when we were at the ONS last week, we spent some time uh, talking through the setup uh, VPP within your test bed. Um, and um, I just wanted to, 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 to kind of go through this. Um, so what we discussed was that today it's mostly relying on a static uh, VPP uh, configuration for the CNF. Um, while it would be good uh, and we already have some work done within NSM, 
Uh, and by VPP, I mean like the CNF VPP, like the thing that runs inside the con container and implements the function. Uh, so <clears throat> what was discussed there was uh, the fact that uh, in NSM, we already have um, kind of programmatic way through VPP agent uh, and uh, linking this to um, configuration map uh, within Kubernetes to essentially uh, have some program programmability of uh, the C CNF. Um, today it's only about ASL and uh, ACL, sorry, and um, um, kind of uh, statically cross-connecting the two interfaces, the incoming and outgoing. Uh, this is what we have um, as, uh, as a so-called VVP agent firewall that we use. Uh, but uh, following that pattern, we can add uh, the IP routing uh, connected in a sim similar way, which I think would be <clears throat> very useful for uh, for the CNF t t test bed and kind of having more dynamic way of um, configuring it. Uh, sounds good. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to continue that. Um, it's something that Michael and Denver and I had been talking about. I, I think there may even be a ticket as far as on that side. And I think it could be split between creating um, ensuring the CNF itself is more generic, specifically a VPP-based CNF, and then adding NSM or whatever stitches the connections together can probably be done separately so that those can be um, completed independently. That sounds good, Nikolai. Okay, can you, can you point me to the ticket if that exists already? Yeah, I'll, I'll follow mean, up with you offline. after this call. Uh, okay, okay, thank you. Yep, Good. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Anything else that folks want to talk about, um, would like to see or talk about? Or does anyone have any other topics? Sorry, I was on mute. Um, I had a question for the person who um, brought up the um, Kubernetes OpenStack talking to each other. I just wanted to clarify, are those independent systems or is one sort of on top of the other? So my preference would be that they're, uh, that they're independent. So basically bare metal Kubernetes talking with, a, with an independent uh, OpenStack uh, my understanding is that the test uh, the test bed already has an OpenStack system running, which is built on top of VPP, and uh, we also in Network Service Mesh have a uh, can attach things. So we have a VPP, we have VPP as a so you have like our Kubernetes, your standard Kubernetes networking, and then we can also attach a VPP based network uh, to it. And then we can coordinate the parameters like the XLAN or, or GRE or whatever you want to use. So, uh, is in the OpenStack side, if we create a port of Neutron and then we were to take the port and instead of hooking up a VM, we were to attach a VXLAN port to it on the other side. I think it would be a relatively easy use case to, to pull off, and we can then focus on like how do we want to accelerate it or uh, you know, in order to make it interesting. And in the Kubernetes side, we, we could also accelerate that data path. So we can do shared memory from the pod to VPP, and then VPP can then use uh, DVDK to, uh, to emit the uh, VXLAM uh, packets out to its destination. So I, I think we have something that's, I'm not gonna say it's, it's easy, but I, I think it's relatively straightforward and certainly easier than other use cases we could take on that would, uh, that would show some significant value to to telcos pretty pretty quickly. Fred, do you think that's something that um, you and or some other folks would be interested in taking on for adding um, 
that use case under the test bed. Yeah, I maybe think with the help of tra training on here's how um, here's how the OpenStack deployment works and getting it set up, and then you have a base for um, for adding that additional support. Yeah, I can. I mean, I can definitely take some of that on. Yeah, yeah, my plate um, should be clearable pretty soon here. So, um, yeah, I can definitely t uh, look into that. Uh, just um, go ahead and um, oh, so sorry define about the that. criteria. I forgot we have um, two, we have two say, threads um, on the line. <laughs> oh, oh, am I the wrong thread? <laughs> yeah, it's right. it's all right if you want to help as well. Um, <laughs> you're never the wrong oh, thread. my God, sorry. I did, I'm just I'm like getting these call outs, and it's like, yeah. what? <laughs> No problem. No, that was, I mean, I'd be happy for you to help, but I know uh, Frederick is, is already working on this, um, some collaboration. But if, if you'd like to help, that'd be great. Um, see you, Tom. Yeah, um, always happy to help. <laughs> well, be okay. quiet now. Yeah, yeah I'd love to no have worries. Another, I'd never have, I would love to have another thread working on this because I'm feeling outnumbered by all the ads. Totally. Okay, great. Um, well, we can get you access on that. For whoever would like to work on this, definitely we welcome pull request and um, follow up uh, outside with a request. Otherwise, but if if anyone has any improvements or whatever, then open a pull request. Um, I, I do think that's a good use case, and so if we can get someone else to drive that and add the support, the the VXLAN stuff um, has been going in as far as the VPP networking stuff, so that's kind of in testing. Um, I know Ian Wells had been giving some feedback on some of that, but that's related to adding the adding the support, for, uh, Frederick, and can follow up with you outside and and see what's left. <laughs> and that sounds good. Great. Anything else? Okay. Well, thanks everyone. The let's see the next CNF test bed um, BOF, uh, which will be the Telco user group, is on the first Monday of May. That's May the sixth, and that's at the same time, eight a.m. Pacific. Thanks everyone for attending. Hope that you can make it next time. Uh, tell folks about the call and let's get more people involved. Okay. All right. Thank you. Happy Monday, Cheers. everyone. Thank you. Sounds great. Bye. Thank Bye, everybody. <laughs>